I want to do a hyperlapse and uh, I might use the harbor here as a and parking lot as my subject. <laughs> so let's just stop this one here. And let's check the battery here. We have still have 13 minutes and 15 seconds until the battery has been... De oh, okay, that changes a little bit <laughs> over time. Let's put it normal mode here because if we use sport mode, we don't have the protection of the sensors. So let's pick hyperlapse and it will take around four minutes to do the hyperlapse. And uh, yeah, what do we want? Maybe uh, set the waypoints here. So what we do with that is we simply just fly it out here. Somewhere there's definitely uh, the waypoint option is definitely the most flexible one. So if we just put that first waypoint here and then we move it basically closer to the harbor here and tilt down the gimbal here like this uh, maybe a little bit further back like this so let's do that and uh, I want to make sure that the, the footage is slightly underexposed here because I like that the so. Aircraft is heading to the first waypoint. so now what it's doing it's it's going to the first waypoint yeah it just said that <laughs> and then um, so it go, it's going to the first waypoint you can see that on the map here that this is actually what it's doing and then it will turn around and then it will start taking images so And there's countless of uh, variations you can do this. There's a free option that basically will allow you to move the drone in any direction. I don't like that because it often doesn't look very well, uh, very good. Then there's like the circle option where you can um, yeah, do a point of interest where you circle around a, a point of interest and then it takes the images like it's doing here. Then there's the waypoint mission and uh, I'm not sure I can remember the last one. Probably a course lock, but let's see that once it's done. But they're working in the same way, more or less. They are, you're setting um, some parameters. Um, you set a duration between each shot. You set how long you want the, the hyperlapse to be. And then it's simply just shooting images and then it's stitching it automatically in the end. It's pretty uncomplicated and it looks really cool when you use it in videos. So right now it's 35, 36. It takes a while if you want to do like a really, really good hyperlapse. It actually takes a while to record this. This was only like four minutes of completing this, but if you want like a really long clip and, and long spacing between the images, it can take quite a while. And then you need a lot of battery to complete a mission like that. And this is where the strength of the classic comes in because of the flight time. It's actually staying in the air for a pretty long time. Not 46 minutes, that's for sure. I've tested this several times and uh, I'm just slightly on uh, the right side of uh, 30 minutes, but it's still uh, way more than uh, what I'm getting with my Mini 3 Pro. You almost have 10 minutes until uh, the battery is fully depleted. So now it's creating the video. Just move it. There's a lot of dog people here right now, so let's just move it, move it out here. So it's not disturbing them more than uh, we need to. So we just do one more. We will fly along the side of the castle here. We are saying two intervals, uh, five second length is fine. Everything is nice. So it takes four minutes to complete this one. And then let's go. And hopefully we have enough battery to complete it. <laughs> but there's no doubt if you're having some interaction on the image, people moving around, uh, cars driving in and out, that makes a lot more interesting end result than uh, just this. There's not that many things going on right now. But it's an amazing place. It's very hard to argue against that. It's a really amazing place, this one. See? <laughs> we are squeezing it big time. <laughs> the question is if the return to home will actually cancel the hyperlapse. We are not even halfway through. 
<laughs> yeah, there are some people walking in the castle alley there. They will probably move very fast when we replay this. But the course lock, the idea with that one is that you simply just point the drone in the direction you want it to fly, and then you lock the course with the sort of yeah, this lock, and then the drone simply could yeah, you could then turn the drone afterward in any direction that you want, but the drone will follow the path uh, of uh, whatever direction that you locked. We are getting closer. We are getting closer. <laughs> oh, we are so <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, one minute. Yeah, we are on the right side still with 10 seconds. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. You could also do the, the raw images, which means that you can do those hyperlapses and third party software if you feel that you would get a better result doing that instead of letting uh, the drone do it uh, automatically. Yes, yes, that's the same as the battery. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Return to home. I will try and cancel it. See what happens if I do that. Oh, cancel. So it continues. Yes. So now it creates the video. And then I can basically ask it to fly back. And it's doing this. So. It's flying back to us. <laughs> if you're new around here, I am Henrik Olsen. And uh, if you found value in this type of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. As you probably have figured out by now, I will be making a lot of videos about this fantastic drone. And I will add all those to a playlist that you can access through this card. You could also, if you liked the video, decide to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you around.